Hi guys, finally time for me to do that Q&A video. Uh, first of all though, before I begin, I'd just like to apologise for this taking so long, but I have been busy recently, obviously with all my exams and stuff, and then what happens, I finally got round to making the video, and then, and then, just a couple of days after I recorded it, somebody sent me more questions. Questions. So, I've had to do it again. Um, I am doing this on the webcam, just for simplicity and the fact though that it will upload instantly. Uh, also, sorry about that noise, but I've got the fan on because it is quite warm. Now, now, as well as asking for questions on YouTube, I asked on Facebook as well. So I've got 28 questions in total to answer, although some of them are a bit simple. So I've organised the questions in a list. So I'm going to be asking um, all of the uh, questions sent in by Facebook users first, then the questions sent in by YouTube users. Users, just for simplicity. So question one. One from from Annette, will you buy a dog when you are older and have a place of your own? That I've got no idea. I tend to live my life on the idea of the idea of cross that bridge when I come to it. And given the fact though that I probably won't be having a place of my own for quite a long time, um, I'd say that that's definitely something to leave till later. Uh, India asks, what are your plans for the future? Probably go to university, get a career. I've always wanted to be a teacher. I've always wanted to be a teacher, so that's something that I hope to do. Barbara asks, what is your favourite subject at school and why? History is the answer to the first part of that question. Why? I just enjoy it. I think it's interesting and I'm also very, very good at it. At it. That's about all I can say to that. Ruslan, um, sorry or a Ruslan, or, or however you say that name, I'm really sorry, it's not a name I'm familiar with. Do you plan to become a famous YouTuber? What do you mean, become a famous YouTuber? YouTuber. I mean, for crying out loud. What on earth do you class as famous? I mean, I've got, I mean, how many subscribers have I got? Got, where is it? I, uh, where is it? Oh, I'm on the wrong page. I, I've got 353 subscribers, and 292,592 to total views, views on all, across all my videos. So I'm already getting quite large as it is. Is certainly better though than I thought. Than I thought though that I could have done. Done than I'm, uh, are in my first two years on YouTube. Hmm. YouTube. So yeah, and I've, I've got hundreds of videos online, and still more more to come. To come. So I mean the channel's growing all the time. So I so at the end of the day I probably will. I mean I'll probably get quite large eventually. It just takes time, you know. Um and then and then another question, er, and then another question from him. What got you into making YouTube videos? Well basically what got me is I was just inspired by watching other people's YouTube videos. Um, ma um, and mainly, uh, mainly quite a lot of the uh, Diesel Ducey and Beno BVE, um, um, uh, um, yeah, yeah, seeing a lot of their lift videos. I started off with Diesel Ducey, Ducey, and then one day I thought, hmm, let's see if I can find videos of some of the lifts in places where I used to live. So I looked up Glade Shopping Centre in Bromley, and Beno BVE's lift tour of the Glade Shopping Centre in Bromley was the very first result. And I didn't even type in lifts, I just typed in Glade Shopping Centre Bromley and that is what came up and I've and and this was before I was on YouTube, I've been a fan of Ben OVE ever since uh, ever since, ever since. And I know though that I'm not normally one for picking favourites favourites, but Ben OVE's channel is still my favourite channel on YouTube and probably always will be because he's just because he's just fantastic. Fantastic. So yeah, and around there, and then there's also other videos, other YouTubers, you know, you know, and I just got inspired, you know, to start doing it myself. Um, uh, from Brian, bless my uncle Brian, bless my great uncle Brian. Is your interest in other ladies a bit up and down? What's an very nice. I'm glad though. I'm glad though that somebody has a sense of humour. To send in a uh, to send in um. A sarcastic question, but but funnily enough, the answer to that is yes, because lifts are not my only 
I'm not the only thing though that I'm interested in. I mean, I'm interested in. I mean, I'm also interested. I mean, my two main interests are lifts and buses, and depending on what I do, it it depends to change. I mean, I mean, I mean, often when I'm not in a place where there's lots of lifts, I do tend to focus a lot on the buses when I'm not really in a place to do a lot about the lifts. But then also, I mean, obviously I've got a Facebook page dedicated to public transport. 95% of that is about buses. So, so you know, you know. So, um, and then there's other things, you know. So, so, so it's quite interesting. And and some days I'm interested in uh, in buses more than lifts. Some days I'm interested in lifts more than buses. Today though, it's probably a bit more buses. Well, or at the moment, because I'm at home and I haven't been near any lifts today. But I may well go into town later, and maybe I'll be a bit more interested in lifts. Possibly. Probably not, though, because on a weekend there's only two lifts, two or three lifts in Pori Road that I can ride on a weekend. Weekends, and two of those are in the shopping centre. So there's not really much there to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. And one of those lifts is boring, and the other ones. Or any other ones crap, so. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yes, that's that. Um. What else is there? And um, um, cool, blah, cool, blah. I've only done a few questions. I've already been talking for six minutes. Right, right. Time to move on. I think before this comes, before this video gets too long. Cam asks, "Where did your interest in elevators come from?" No idea. The interest. It's. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, my interest in buses came from when I was about two or three living in the UK. Lifts. I'm not sure. It wasn't really a big thing when I was in the UK. It was more after I moved here and started watching videos on YouTube that I really began to develop an interest. So yeah. And then okay, and then Keegan asks what is your favourite bus? I mean it's hard to pick an exact favourite bus. I mean there's quite a lot of buses that I like. I suppose though my favourite maker of buses is probably Scania. I like I, I really like Scania buses, especially the modern ones. The modern ones have a really nice engine engine. Um, um my favourite Marna bus and the bus though that takes me to and from school is a Scania Marna 166. It's a K280 UB6, so you can see pictures of that um, 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 are on the Facebook page. Or, in fact, if you look on my YouTube channel, you will see that there are three bus pictures on my uh, channel cover, and it's the one in the left. It's one of the two on the left that are at the bottom underneath Envira 200, and then 166 is on there. Um, is on there on my uh, cover photo and on my YouTube channel channel so you can see it there there or just go or don't be lazy go onto my Facebook page page bus and transport enthusiasts um bus and transport enthusiasts um, of NZ it says click like and look at photos there 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 but yeah I do like scanners and I've been on a few scanners I've also been on the, the Airbus Express version in Auckland and that, and then, and then, and then, I really want to go on more Scania's. I'd like to do some of the two axle ones that Richie's got, got, uh, got, and I'd also like to go on some of the design line body ones, and and some others around the world. I do like Scania's. Um, Cameron Nicholas has asked. Um, uh, I noticed that you're from the UK. What do you find are the main differences between here and the UK? That's quite a vague question. Question. Um, I suppose though that obviously. I think, I mean, I do prefer New Zealand to the UK, and I will admit that. Overall, I find that New Zealand is basically a much cleaner, greener, safer, um, and all round, an all round better country to live in than the UK. Um, it's, there's also a lot more landscape, a lot more scenery here than the UK. But I find all that a bit boring, though. I'm I'm not a country person at all. I I'm all, I mean, you would never. I always have to be in the city where there's things like buses, lifts, and all my interests are there. Um, and uh, and then Cameron has again asked, "What's your favourite place in New Zealand?" I don't really have a favourite place in New Zealand. I I, I honestly don't. I mean, I, I mean, I like going into Wellington CBD, but that's just where I live. I live in Wellington. I I honestly don't have a favourite place in Wellington. I mean anywhere where there's civilization, city, towns, I like it. And finally, and the last one from Cameron, do you remember any significant differences differences between UK and NZ bus scenes? Yes. The UK operates the loads of double deckers. New Zealand 
does not. And then also the other main difference is that is that um, is that you pretty much don't ever get three axle city buses um, um, are in the UK. It can happen, does happen. It doesn't happen in London because where I used to live in London, and it generally hardly ever happens. Happens so. Yeah, whereas here we have them all over the place because we don't have double deckers. There's uh, Tony asks, "What is your dream job? Teacher, as I mentioned before, I want to be a teacher. Whether that's primary or secondary, I don't know." KTM, what's your favourite bus line or company? Well, I have two favourites. My first favourite is obviously Marna Coach Services, mainly because I think they operate some great, interesting vehicles. They have some really nice Scania's. Uh, some really nice Volvo B10 M's, um, some of which have got some of them like 72 and that have got a really nice sounding engine. And then they also operate things like some Volvo B7 R's, like 146, 147, great sounding engine. And, that, and then my other favourite, I suppose, would have to be NCS because they just operate some nice rare vehicles. And and then also because they've refurbished quite a lot of the buses themselves, a lot of their buses have a sort of character to them and, and all the refurbishment work that they've done is stuff is means that the buses have a bit of design to them that you just don't see in any other bus company because the buses themselves generally are pretty much unique to NCS and I like that. It gives the company character and it's like sort of their signature mark and they have some really great and both companies also have really great customer service and drivers. And then also what would you recommend is the best? Don't know. I mean yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's what people think is the best company. I suppose is their opinions. So again, I'd probably have to say Marna or NCS because I think they've got really good customer service. Marna, I'd say, are probably a lot more reliable than NCS. I would say so. I'd probably have to say Marna because I mean, I know I some of my experiences from NZ Bus have shown that they're a bit unreliable and some of their drivers aren't so good. So whereas I think, I mean, I mean, yes you get that with a, with quite a few bus companies, or all of them in fact. But I think though that overall Marna tend to be quite reliable and seem to have very good customer service. So, And then finally, the last of Facebook questions comes from Price. If I, fall, if I jump when a falling lift hits the ground, will I remain unharmed? No. No. Uh, I saw that tried on Mythbusters, um, on Mythbusters, and they proved that no, that doesn't work. Blimey, and, and if you are still here after 12 and a half minutes, then well done for you, because it's time to get on to the YouTube questions. NAT triple Z 9119 asks, asks, what computer do you have? It's a Dell Dimension E520 or something like that. What does that sticker say? Ah, not a lot. I just read that off of the computer. I don't know much about PCs. And why do you like ADLs? I don't. I don't like the ADLs. I think, uh, well, it's not, it's kind of difficult. I think that the ADLs, the Enviro 200 though, that we have in this country, are all right, but they could be better. They're not as good as British ADLs, as the ones though, that you get in the UK. And also, because they're kit built here, and, almost, and pretty much every Enviro 200 is the same, they're so boring. You know, the Enviro 200s in this country have only got one changeable feature, and that is the covers that go on the seats. Everything else in every ADL is exactly the same apart from the seat covers. So that means every, every, every and also what colour the paint is on the outside. I mean, that means every ADL in this country is the same. There's not, I mean, not, there's not really anything that has a signature mark that says this is our bus, this is our company's. You know, it's not like... I mean, I mean, even all of the handrails are always the same colour. They're always that same shade of yellow. I mean, and also there's so many AD of the of the ADLs, so many of these identical looking buses all over the all over the North Island. There's none in the South Island. They're all in the North Island of the country, country mainly in Auckland and Wellington, especially in Auckland and Wellington CBD. But it just gets so boring. And now, now some questions from Ben OBBE. First of all, are there many good voice where you are, or are they, f or are they few and far between? Well, obviously there's those Vol there's those really nice Volvo V7R voice that I filmed. Other than that, I would not have a clue because I know nothing about gearboxes. Boxes. Uh, are there any BAE hybrids where you are? As far as I'm aware, no. 
Uh, New Zealand is terrible at eco-friendly transport. We do have trolley buses in Wellington, the only city that operates them, we've got about 60, and the bastards are replacing them all in 2017, 17 when the contract for them expires. Though the plan, I believe, though, is to replace them with hybrids. Somebody has informed me of of a brand of, of the company, though, that they're looking at, but unfortunately I'm not allowed to tell you, tell you, Although, or, 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 although, although, if you really must know, though, then send me a private message. Then I might be willing to tell you if you're lucky, and I trust you, trust you enough, enough to not tell anyone else, else, else. Because the info was told to me with quite a bit of secrecy, and also it's not certain. But other than the trolleys, there, are, there's a few CNG powered buses um, in Hamilton. Hamilton run by Go Bus, and then also there's a few buses around in Christchurch um, that are power, or, or if they've still got them, that is, that are powered by biofuel, by biofuel, and then and then I think User Bus in Wellington, Palmerston North, have got one or two as well, but they're only a really little company, so that's not really a lot of that. So not really very good for hybrids, yeah. Um, and then also he asks, are there any old buses in regular passenger service where you are? At the moment, yes. In Auckland there's, there's still quite a few SL243s and, um, um, and whatever the Bendy bus version is up there. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, still in passenger service. In Wellington, the Go Wellington might still be running one or two SL243 mans. I'm not sure. I mean, the SL243s are mans. Um, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Oh, oh yes, and also you've got the old style SL 200s in Auckland, which I know they've been running until recently. I'm not sure if they've removed them yet. Oh, oh um, I'm, uh, oh, um, no, 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 silly me. Not the SL 200, the articulated version. Silly me. And then also you've got, um, and then also in Wellington, in Wellington you've got Marna is still running one of their old 1980s. Um, Volvos. It, it used to be well. They used to be Volvo trolley buses. Then they were converted to regular beat and M's. And Marna is still running one um, in Wellington out of the Newlands depot. Other than that, I'm not sure. There's there's a, there's, a, there's some 1990s mat. There's lots of 1990s man buses around, and quite a lot of 1990s Nissan Scorpions in Auckland. There's also some SL202s and 90s mans on Waikiki Island as well and possibly some SL series mans in Christchurch. Other than that, I'm not really sure, because a lot of the older buses, mainly the SL202s and SL243s, have been sold off to other companies to be used as school and charter buses. Companies like like um, Explorer Bus, NCS, you know, you know or, N or NZ Bus run them as school buses out of the Runcingham's depot, depot and that, you know. So, I'm not sure how much longer these old buses are going to remain in service. And then obviously as well as that there are rebuilt buses like Marna operate Volvo b ms and Mercedes Benz i 305s that have been rebuilt with modern bodies from the very early 2000s. But the chassis and engine on and engines on them are still original if you still count that as old. And then also some other chartering companies like Auckland Explorer are operating old buses. I mean they've got an old double decker that they're using. Um, and then they've also got an Optair Spectra double decker as well, as well. So, and then that's kind of that. And then, and then, and then, and then, last one from Ben Ovie: Do you get any American brands of lifts in New Zealand, such as American Otis or Dover? Not really, so much as I've seen. A lot of our lifts tend to be a sort of a mix between European and Asian style, and style, style. It, it depends. I mean, I know a lot of shin. Uh, Quite a few older lifts tend to be more European. We do get Otis Lexan from the 1970s. We do have the, uh, where it depends, we do have the 70s American Otis buttons, the Lexan ones, uh, which are quite nice. I also know where there's a touch sensitive one in Wellington Hospital talk as well. As well. Um, and there's one at Auckland Airport. I mean, God, fancy that, eh? Auckland Airport is still running. I'm not, I can't remember if it's international or domestic terminal. I think it's the international one. I'm, I'm not sure on that. He's still running a pair of 70s Otis lifts with touch sensitive fixtures. I, c I can't believe it. All, amongst all those modern Schindlers they've got. 
I, it was just a complete spur of the moment rare find. And then there's and then also the VNM McGrath generics from the 1980s, which there aren't that bad actually. They're quite nice generics. I actually quite like them. They've got American GAL fixtures. Uh, other than and then there's also one modernised express lift in Wellington that uses some American buttons. Other than that, that's about them. You know, there might be some other stuff elsewhere. Other than that, no. So they're not really other than that. That's kind of what there is that I've found. I mean, there might be some others. Maybe Wagered Otis knows of a few, or or maybe other people do. Okay, now from uh, okay now from uh, ID Lift 3000. How did you get interested in this, and how long have you been? Uh, probably as I answered before, before before to Cam's question. Um, and it's one of those things that are a bit like buses I've been interested in since I was a toddler but my interest in this didn't really come about until after I moved here and after I started watching videos on YouTube is when I really became interested so probably around about five to seven odd years I mean, I've been in New Zealand for seven years so probably about five to six years possibly seven and then another one from IGLIFT 3000 is security and NZ strict for lift filmers depends where you go I would not recommend going up office towers. I mean, especially as a lot of office towers here are quite open plan. So if you go up in the lift, the lift doors open and you are pretty much in someone's office, in the main office. You don't generally get much in terms of a foyer between the lifts and the offices. It depends which buildings you go into. Sometimes if you go into the smaller office buildings or the older one, or older buildings, then you might get lucky and find something like that. Like that. So yeah, so yeah, so you have to, so so you really do only though have to be careful. But if you go into low rise places like shopping centres, car parks, airports or small office buildings, you know, or other places or outdoor lifts and museums, then you'll be fine. Fine. But you do though have to be careful and make sure though that if there is a no photography sign, then you be careful and make sure though that there's no one about. Now, but I've only ever been to two shopping centres with no no photography signs, and I filmed in those, and those shopping centres I filmed in two or three times and never been caught. So you know, you know, so, 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 you know, you know, it's fine. You just gotta be careful and make sure though that you try, and make sure though that you check where you're going and filming. And like I said, I recommend not filming in office towers, hotels maybe. I've only ever been to one high-rise hotel. And then another one from um, excessive with two X's and two V's, so E X X S S I V V E, however you say it. Um, what's the best lamp post you've ever seen? You've ever seen? Don't know. Lamp posts. I've really, I've really only been interested in lamp posts for a few months. That's an interest though that I've kind of again got from online, looking at Beno VVE's videos and trying to think. Hmm, this is quite interesting. I suppose though that my favourite probably right now is probably the nice modern LED lamp post though that there are down at down at the new housing estate in Whitby. Um, I quite like those because um, they look quite nice and modern. Other than that, any old vintage style lamp posts I quite like. And then also some of the lamp posts though um, are, are on the Spinnaker Walkway, not the crappy modernised ones, but the ones though that have got the original lamp heads on them. They look quite nice because they're made to look old style. So I quite like those too. And then from Wagged Otis, the last three questions are all from Wagged Otis. Your most favourite lift? My most favourite kind of lift is the Kone Eco Disc or Disc. I like Kone. Kone are my favourite manufacturer, especially the Eco Disc. I do love a good Eco Disc. And then, and then that's kind of like my favourite modern lifts or even some old lifts. I like any form of Kone really. And then, and then, and then also probably my favourite other types of lifter express. I do love my express lifts, and so does Wagged Otis actually. I do love my expresses. And um, most favourite bus, kind of already answered that. I like Scania's, but if I but if I was to pick one, I'd probably say the Katowato UB6. It's a really nice bus. It runs really smooth. It steers well. I mean, a lot of the drivers have said that, that it's very easy. A lot of the drivers also said that it's very easy to drive, especially because it's got rear axle steering and steers well, is what a lot of the drivers are saying. It's very smooth, the the noise isn't too bad, I mean you can still hear the engine quite well, quite well at the back, very well at the back, but it's not insanely loud, the engine's, the engine, the engine is smooth, the ride's smooth, it's really, really nice. And also, 
And and then the last one from Wagado is, would you want to go to the United States? Maybe, you know, I would like to go to the United States maybe one day. I mean, I mean, I mean, I will admittedly say that I'm not so interested in American styles of lifts. I mean, it, it, it's just not my preference. My favourite styles of lifts are actually the European ones, which is why I'm glad though that I'm going to, um, which is why I'm glad though that I'll be going to the UK. You, I'm going on holiday, in holiday in less than one week. Although, although I'm going to Hong Kong on the way, on the way for a few days, and then around then around then, and the week after next, next, next I'll be in the UK and. You know, to film some UK lifts. I'm not so much of a fan of the American style ones, but some of them are still very interesting. Um, I would like to go and see some American. I actually, because I also like car wash machines. I just don't film them that often because I actually hand wash our car. Car because car washes in this country are so bloody expensive, expensive that we can't afford to use them. To use them, so I would like to do that. You know, you know, and I'd like and. Because we don't get any conveyorised systems here. All of the car washes in this country are in Bay Automatics. And I, I like the American designs of car wash and I like to go and I like to go and visit some American car washes. Uh, so yeah, there's one or two things though that I might like to go to the States for. But I mean the United States isn't somewhere high on my priorities. I mean obviously I'm going to Hong Kong and Singapore, places I like to go and see because there's some interesting buses there. And then I'd also possibly like to go to Australia, although there's a lot of Dewhurst there, which will be so boring. But there's some interesting buses there. I'd like to go to Australia, and also I'd like to explore, to explore, to explore. Um, maybe one day I'd like to explore, explore other parts of Europe and, and England, and possibly even other parts of England and maybe Ireland or stuff. And then, and then as well as that, I'd like to go to other cities in New Zealand. I'd like to go to Dunedin. Christchurch again, I'd like to go back to Auckland, Hamilton, Tauranga, you know, there's loads of places in New Zealand I'd like to go as well. So that's it guys, after half an hour, that is tw all 28 questions answered. Answered. So, so if you did miss out on asking me a question, don't, don't, don't worry, um, don't worry, um, answer it, uh, ask a question in the comment section below, below, and I will try and answer it via the comment section. But if you're going to do that, for God's sake, try and make sure that you've got the reply feature enabled because it would make answering your question so much easier. 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 But other than that, that that's all the questions, guys. So that's it.